Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We're excited to have Eric Winham and Jared Cornelius from Target, and they're going to be presenting on Beginner's Guide to Target. And I know you're all eager to get started with the presentation. So before I pass it over to Eric and Jared, as a reminder, we are recording this webinar, and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, we encourage you to type them into the questions box, and we can get them addressed at the end of our session during our Q&A time. So now I'm going to pass it on over to Eric to kick off our presentation. Perfect. Thank you, Angie. Appreciate the introduction and appreciate you all coming uh, and, and, and spending some time with us. Really excited to show you what Target has to offer. And, um, you know, more or less uh, re-engaging with our partnership with Inovia and, 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 and showing you what kind of other tools you guys can add to your tool set and what Target can offer you all. So looking forward to it. As uh, Angie mentioned, I'm Eric Wenham. I'm a director of solutions and sales here at Target. And then we have Jared Cornelius with us, who is the director of pre-sales. So uh, again, appreciate everybody uh, joining and uh, look forward to uh, hear what everybody uh, thinks about it. So Target is a, uh, a 20 plus year old uh, multinational company and with over 100 employees and um, continue to expand our portfolio and, and our, our customers and adding uh, more or less uh, uh, features and functions that we want to uh, bring to everybody in the, that's interested in the BI space. Um, with very innovative approach and um, have been creating new tech and or native open source on top of our, our core platform. Um, you know, not bolting on the third party product, uh, which is really resulting in improved scalability, performance and, and user experience. So, you know, um, as Henry Ford once said, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and if he had asked the people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Um, so we are here as a end to end solution and 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 you'll as we go through this presentation understand what i mean by that but we are not just uh here to support at a, just a product level but also through a deployment um uh level as well uh so that we can not only just help our clients ex excel more but bring them better insights um and yeah, continue to explore and, and expand upon their solution. Uh, really with us, BI is a living, breathing thing. And uh, data is continue to be con, uh, uh, created around us. And with us being an enterprise solution, what other better way than to pull that in and align it with your existing data sources and, uh, uh, and get, again, additional insight and more insight uh, to your business. So we bridge the gap between traditional and modern BI environments. Um, we're a very robust uh, platform. And as I mentioned earlier, offer an enterprise solution combining multiple data sources uh, for one centralized repository, one version of the truth, and uh, really the ability to allow users to do self-service analytics. Uh, on top of that, now that the data is available to be consumed on virtually any device for mobility, uh, to a web-based client, to embedding it in a company portal, uh, as well as automate uh, scheduled reports and uh, static, you know, PDFs or Excel, uh, it, and and setting up notif notifications on any KPI uh, you want to monitor. User adoption is very key uh, to tar target success. Uh, many uh, strengths are are built around that. And we'll dive into that further once we get into like uh, target management and security and all that good stuff. But really what we provide to our end users and how to uh, deploy uh, throughout your organization successfully. Uh, 
it's and it's very important uh, uh to, you know the, the, to to think about that uh, especially with the robust security settings you, you don't have to manage multiple dashboards for everybody but you can you know set it up so that when people log in they're just seeing their pertinent information based off the one dashboard uh so it makes managing it a lot easier and uh and then again user adoption picks up sorry skipped ahead there <laughs> so this is a little bit of our brag slide if you will um and have experience in a variety of industries uh, target is widely distributed and we have more than 5,000 customers and uh more than well over 300,000 individual users uh benefit benefiting from uh what target has to offer so so we are more or less seasoned junkies uh data junkies as i say and uh have experience with multiple data sources and and customers continue to bring us additional data sources that we haven't had a problem connecting to and uh and really able to deliver upon their their requirements so we're not you know just siloed into one data source but we will have different types of data connections so that we can pull in that data get to it and and then uh align it with your all your systems and push it out to the right people so as i mentioned we have a, a, a we're an end-to-end -end solution so we don't just uh, sell you a product and, and and wish you good luck we're here all the way through to whatever level of capacity you you need um from you know walking through and building from not just your uh, uh data warehouse where everything is uh, will be uh, uh pull in through but like down to like building dashboards for you if you don't have that uh talent in-house so we also try to help when you are ready to roll this out to users within an employment uh, uh, guide uh, to make sure that we are more or less picking up uh, what people are using and what they're not using and, and uh, continue to keep those conversations going uh, to understand what else they're wanting. Um, and, be, and not be surprised by once you do roll it out, you're going to get a lot of questions and a lot of requests coming through and how to best organize and and uh, uh, funnel that th those things uh, to an area where you can manage it. And again, we are there to help if necessary uh, throughout this entire process. So uh, we are a community uh, target offers um uh, a lot of resources and we continue to, to expand upon that and i'll show you that here later um but we never want anybody to feel alone uh and we really want to continue to offer inspiration uh so that they can continue to expand upon their bi platform and solution to their users and and, and again take it to the next level it really is a journey you don't want to do big bang you want to be able to uh, explore this uh in a fashion where uh not only are you uh, you know we are looking at a individual department and expanding on the or, or zeroing in on the requirements but you got to also validate that information so that way when customers come in uh, or i'm sorry when users come in to to digest the information that everything is accurate and, and nothing seems to be off or we they they lose trust in the system. So really key point is validating. But now with that, I'm gonna pass it over to you, Jared. And uh, if you wouldn't mind walk them through uh, a little demonstration of Target. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll take you through uh, an example of the types of content uh, that Target can provide, the types of insight that you can gain from using Target Platform. And really, this the examples I'm going to show today are really just that, just an example of the many different types of 
content and analysis that you can perform with Target. It really doesn't matter what the data is or who needs to access it. We have uh, the ability to uh, to connect up, blend and integrate any type of data and deliver it to uh, any type of user in the format and means that they need to consume it. So as Eric mentioned, whether that's logging in on demand over the web and running reports live and interacting with the data, or if it's even perhaps scheduled distribution out to a, a broad audience of multi-page printed PDF reports, Target provides a, a single uh, interface to create whatever uh, information insight is necessary. With this example here, um, based around some retail demo data, of course, you get a, uh, an example of types of kind of high level information that Target can surface quite quickly. So there's a number of KPIs across the top showing me insight into my year to date performance related to revenue profitability and how we're doing compared to our goals. And then it's broken down in terms of top 10 analysis based on salesperson, uh, have that split out revenue by country, as well as some comparison of my performance versus our goal, and as well as performance versus the same period last year, the previous year. And you'll notice some things like some nice visual indication. So that's one thing that Target excels in is making the data uh, visual in nature so that you, it jumps out at, at the user. They don't have to comb through uh, thousands of transactions uh, and do you know, a bunch of uh, mental gymnastics to figure out what's going on. It's a great way to, to see the high level, but you still do have the ability to drill deeper into the detail. One of the most powerful capabilities with Target is it's, everything is interactive. So in this case, if I was to you know, select on a particular salesperson, you'll notice that the rest of the objects automatically drill down or filter on that object I selected. In this case, Vern Ferguson, we see uh, what his performance looks like across the country and what his trend of sales has looked like over time. You may have also noticed that some of these KPIs have changed colors now because in Vern's case, uh, you know, we were uh, turned out profitability wise, we're worse than the previous year. And so that's why this is red or we're a little bit below uh, where he should be in terms of, of the goal. Uh, so it's kind of one of the aspects of Target that makes it really easy again to see the high level, but also drill deeper and deeper into uh, into the, uh, the details. And the other thing you might notice here with this particular example, I've got a number of different views that show me insight across you know, not just the high level overview, but who my customers are, uh, what products are uh, selling the most, and even all the way down to the individual invoices. And with Target, I can interact with the data on screen here, but I can also seamlessly kind of navigate across my, my different uh, types of content. So, you know, in this case, I might just keep, you know, Sanjeev selected here. Maybe I spot that, you know, in last month in, in April, he had a pretty good month. And uh, in terms of he was above uh, the goal and, and above the previous year, maybe I wanna see what customers he sold to. I can drill to that customer report and it's gonna keep that context in place. So you'll notice here, it knows that I had Sanjeev selected uh, as well as it knows I had the month of April selected. So now I'm just looking at here, are the 17 customers that Sanjeev sold to, 225 total sales, here's the breakdown of those customers' profitability, what the mix of products were, and even gives me insight into what does pipeline look like that month. Likewise, we could drill over into see what products that Sanjeev sold. Uh, again, seeing it keeps me in context there with him. It knows I was in the month of April. Perhaps I wanna expand that out so I can see the day-to-day -day trend of information and, and see that top level detail. Again, it still knows I'm at the 225 uh, total uh, numbers of sales and what that profit margin look like. And then again, even all the way down to that individual invoice level detail or that transaction level detail, depending on the context of, of your data. Keep all the time, keep me in context. Here are all the different customers. Here's that individual invoice level records. And I can still continue to interact and, and navigate uh, around and, and kind of ask questions of the data and explore it dynamically. All of this data is accessible and this information is accessible on demand at any point. You don't have to wait for the end of a period to be able to run the reports. I don't have to uh, cobble together data from a variety of different data sources, targets, uh, platform handles all of that for you. In these cases, looking at uh, what would be you know, commonly referred to as dashboards, right? Uh, a lot of information at a glance on a single screen, but you're gonna have scenarios where you actually want to generate 
uh, operational reports or financial reports and target allows you to do that with the same tool, same interface. Uh, and even in this case, the same document, I still have my sales overview dashboard, but you might notice I have a different layout for it. I have a, a report layout for this particular view. So when I do want to print this to PDF, I'm able to specifically control the page layout and it might have, it might require multiple pages to get all the information. Like in this case, I've got a, a summary level page and as well as I've got customer level detail that's going to span multiple pages uh, for this particular report. Just to give you an idea of what I'm referring to, I'll go ahead and print this out to, to PDF right now so we can see an example. In this case, because I have included so much detail year to date, it's going to you know, be quite a few pages. I think it probably roughly around 30 or so. So as this uh, the page counter is, is uh, at incrementing up there, as soon as this is done generating, we'll have a nice printable PDF version of this document that could be uh, easily distributed to whoever might need to, to consume that information. And the same is true layout wise, uh, we have native applications for mobile devices. So you can have specific layouts and views if you wanted to tailor the presentation of this particular dashboard for a mobile device, the same concept applies. <clears throat> but in this case, we have now that PDF version, just again, for, for demonstration purposes, I'll kind of just show you, here's that high level summary overview. And then we get into individual customer level details. And this is gonna be, you know, roughly 30, 35 pages long. And you can see how Target is able to, to generate this type of uh, operational report, um, as well as the interactive dashboards. The other thing I wanted to mention too is the ability to actually automatically distribute information. So in this case, maybe I wanna send this report out to uh, users on a, on a monthly basis, and I don't wanna to have to do this each and every month. I just wanna set up a schedule. I can easily do that, come in here and, and say, I wanna add a schedule for this particular report. And you can pick whatever the recurrence pattern is that you need, uh, or if it's daily, weekly, uh, monthly. You know, uh, maybe I just wanna send this out uh, the, the first day of, of the month. So I'll essentially get a snapshot of the previous month's performance. Um, I can easily do that. I can pick the format that I wanna send it in, PDF, Excel as an image, uh, whatever the appropriate format is that you need it in. Then how do I want it to be delivered? Perhaps I uh, want to have a report that's published to uh, sent to a folder to create a, a, a an archive of monthly snapshots, or I want to email it directly to individuals. Or a, a really powerful option is Target's ability to batch this report. So what this allows me to do is, let's say in this case with this sales report, uh, you know maybe I want to send this to all of my individual sales managers, and and I don't want to have to create separate versions of this report just for my different sales managers. I want to have one report, but I want to batch this to each of my individual sales managers. That's what this option allows me to do. I can come in here and, and pick my sales manager uh, from my data. And here are, in this case, I have four different sales managers. So now when this schedule runs uh, at the, the first day of the month, all four managers are going to receive a copy of it. And it's going to be, they're going to be specifically filtered to their uh, employees and, and the, the, the sales that they're responsible for. Uh, and so with that, um, I'll go ahead and publish this out to a folder. We'll set it on batch. And now that's scheduled. Um, I can open up my scheduled jobs and you can see here's all the various schedules that I have. I wanted to manage those. Here's the sales overview uh, schedule that we just sent out. Um, it hasn't run yet. Uh, of course, we're not gonna wait till the first of the month to, to run this. I can go ahead and run this right now. And while that runs, what's happening is that's gonna generate those individual copies of the, the report in the background. I'll close this out and let me um, go over into my uh, file explorer where this these got sent to. There we go. Open up the, the folder and now I can see I've got four individual copies of, of that particular document. And just kind of show you the difference here. I opened up uh, Fina Tellwrights. You can see uh, right away, uh, it's got her specific report there. Filter to just show her data, filter to just so, show her specific customers and maybe open up uh, Justin's here. And we'll see, yep, his is gonna be uh, slightly different and, and filtered to, to just show his specific data. 
But again, just a really handy way to automate the distribution, whether it's a financial report, and you want to distribute income statements based on multiple divisions within the company, or uh, maybe sales commission reports out to sales employees, or even batching reports out to your individual customers. Um, very easy to just sort of set it and automate the, the distribution of, of that information going forward. And then maybe the last thing I wanted to point out about Target 2 is uh, accessing reports, dashboards on demand at any point is great. Uh, allows you visibility at any time. Being able to schedule reports out is also great when you get need to deliver information to users on a, a specific schedule. But you can also have Target monitoring the data in the background and, and really uh, and sending alerts or notifications to the appropriate person if attention is needed. So it's a great way you can even have kind of reduce the need to, for a reliance on somebody to go check a dashboard, actually have Target proactively sending a, an alert when something uh, you know, needs somebody's attention and um, or maybe just when you want to stay on top of something. So uh, using this as an example, really any object in Target, any you know, if it's a cell in a table or if it's a, a you know, a, a, a point in a, in a chart like this, you can right click on it and say, I want to actually monitor this value. I'm clicking on revenue here. I want to say, I want to monitor my, my revenue. And you say, when, you know, what is my condition that I want to be notified on or, or alerted on when revenue changes a certain amount, when it increases or decreases, maybe 10%. If it doesn't change, really total control, lots of flexibility in terms of setting up intelligent data-driven uh, notifications. And maybe in this case, since this is revenue, maybe I want to see if it's, uh, if we're meeting our goal, right? Uh, so I'll compare revenue and see if, if it's less than my revenue goal. I want to be notified. I, I want this trigger to, to alert me uh, when this particular condition exists, right? And again, now I have a schedule that I can set. Maybe I want to set this, um, you know, for let's say uh, the 20th day uh, of each month. That way I know uh, how far, if I'm on track to meet my goal or not, right? And I could have said maybe if I'm 10% uh, below my goal for the month, I wanna be notified. Again, just so I can take action. I don't have to go check this dashboard all the time, but Target's gonna monitor the data for me based on this schedule or this on queue process in certain conditions, I want real time notification. Every time the data changes, I want it to compare this condition. Uh, if that condition is met, I need to be notified instantly right away uh, so I can take action on it. Just another great way to, to put data to work uh, at your organization in, in a variety of different ways. And finally, again, I know uh, Eric mentioned uh, user governance and, and data security, extremely important for our customers and, and in business intelligence in general. And Target makes it extremely easy to do that. So, for example, maybe you've got a variety of different, uh, you know, locations and you've got users, uh, maybe different location managers. And when they log in, they should only see the data related to their location and nobody else's or certain territory managers should only see data related to their territory. I could have one dashboard shared across all of the users and then based on who they are, then when they log in, the data is automatically filtered uh, for that specific user. What's great, you don't have to have a whole bunch of different dashboards uh, based on that user. Uh, you can have a single dashboard to serve them all. And what's even better for your, uh, let's say an IT team or people who are administrating Target, you don't have to have any technical skills in order to set this up. Extremely easy to do so. Um, behind here, I've had Target Management Console open up. You'll notice uh, under security here, I've selected on some roles. And I just have a demonstration role here called NA Sales Manager for North America Sales Manager. And what you notice here, I can specify who's a member of this particular role. And then from a database level, what data do they have access to? You might have a whole bunch of different sources. In this case, for, for the sales role, uh, any member of this team doesn't have access to finance, the HR information, inventory production. They only have in, uh, access to the sales data, right? Uh, and you can even control specifically certain uh, dimensions or, or measures that people in this role might be able to, to specify. No coding require, easy to manage UI. Likewise, from a document level, which actual reports or dashboards do people have access to? And then what's really nice and handy is this notion of criteria. So here's where the uh, kind of row level security takes place. 
since these are not just sales managers, these are specifically the North American sales manager, I have what Target refers to as forced criteria, where on that sales dimension, there's a specific filter in play that says where the territory is North America. So now if somebody from this role was to log in, run that very same dashboard that we were just looking at, it's instantly and automatically gonna be filtered to only show data in North America. So it makes it very easy to manage, very easy to set up, and you can be uh, sure that the data is well governed and secure based on who needs to access it. So with that brief demonstration, I'd like to turn it back over to you, Eric. You wanna wrap up? Perfect, no, thank you, that, that was great. And so let me uh, get my screen over here. Hopefully now you guys are seeing my screen with the Target website. Yep. And uh, from here, like, I just wanna make sure everybody, you know, we were talking about a bunch of resources and community, that there's a lot of these things are accessible through our site itself. Um, I talked about the community. So if you ever wanted to go to the community and uh, and see what's going on there, and I'll, we'll, we'll jump to that here shortly. You go there, customer portal, all that good stuff, documentation. Um, and I, I'm gonna step through all this stuff. Uh, but uh, we, we just wanna be con continue to add content and we want, especially with our target community, we want users input. Uh, we want people to be able to post really anything that they're they're uh, struggling with or have questions about or even advice um, and uh, we'll, we'll get that to that short in, in a moment the other th important thing to note is that as I said we've been in business for over 20 years and uh, we are originated out of uh, Denmark and that's where the vision was born and, and and created as long along with a, another Microsoft ERP uh, Exapta so or AX so we have um, created a accelerator for almost every Microsoft platform out there um, and this accelerator is is really big when you're looking at a BI um, a, a tool because this foundation really helps pick up and and uh, and deliver immediate results. Now, it, as I said earlier, it, there might need to be some validation. That's why I call it a foundation versus a plug and play or, you know, um, uh, built in solution because there, there's things that everybody does differently that um, there might need to be some things done on the on the, the ETL or the data model side uh, for it to, to uh, uh, adhere and and represent the numbers that your your users are used to seeing but as you can see we have a uh, uh solutions uh from the vision from a, from a very very long time ago all the way up to the latest and greatest bc so um again foundation but you can go into here and you can see what we offer out of the box um and and what measures and, and dimensions all interact with each other and, and there's other further customizations that you can run uh throughout the uh deployment of the bia but again it's very great uh resource or uh thing to get you going um so that you you're using the tool uh right out of the gates potentially so the other uh, documentation and resources that I've mentioned is very valuable here on this site. Um, and we have all, all of our training courses available through PDF here to any, any users. Um, we obviously also offer uh, in-person training or virtual training as it is right now um, for every user on each course so you can interact with the instructor. But at least you, at the very least, you have the access to these uh, training manuals uh, to, you know, get going and understand or refer back to while you continue to under learn and 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 roll out Target. On the right hand side is all the uh, videos with updates from every release that we've had out there and what's included in them, um, down to again documentation and understanding of like from installation and. Uh, of, of the solution to uh, uh, the 
back in administrator course that uh, in target management that Jared was just uh, referring to. So we have a nav reference guide for our accelerator and uh, just a ton of information that we want to make sure to set up our and you know, provide to our users so that they can be successful with our help or without our help. You know, it's uh, it's up to you. If you if you need some of our assistance, we're there for you. If not, and you guys can take it and own it, uh, great. But uh, that's why we have again many levels of that offering. The next area is the target community, which is uh, a new thing that we've recently released, and this is really where we want all of our users to engage and interact with each other. And this is going to continue to evolve, but um, for now, it's everybody that is part of the target community can post uh, their questions or suggestions. Uh, I like to look at like uh, uh, one example. If I look at Google Sheets and do a quick search on that, it will populate everything that you know uh, I, I, I plugged into the search bar. But this right here is by one of our other customers, Tyler, and he um, posted a, 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 a this this post as you see um, with ideas or thoughts for people workaround um, with the Google authentication uh, tokens. It's hard for uh, sometimes the connection to succeed if, if something is authenticated. So he's went ahead and provided people a way to get around that, and uh, so people weren't, you know, not able to pull in a, a Google Sheet or point their ETL to a Google Sheet, and 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 if if it was protected or authenticated, um, this is the way to get around it. Th this is the content that we really want to continue to expand and provide um, so that all of our users can benefit from it. So as, as I said, this is something we just launched and we're gonna continue to expand upon it and, and uh, grow its um, capabilities. Uh, the, the, some of the thoughts or ideas would be that we can create uh, not just a general community, but have community groups like you do in social media or um, like LinkedIn groups. So we could have a division group uh we could have a, a particular industry group of for food manufacturing and uh, so forth and so on where people are able to join and, and become members of and and you can uh continue to dialogue amongst amongst each other um so again something that we really want to try to add more content to to bring you more value as a uh uh, uh target customer next site is uh, solutions.target.com. Uh, and th this is really cool because this is not an actual website, but in fact, Target, and I'm gonna show you by loading it up. This is the Anywhere client, and that basically is telling us we're getting into Target Anywhere. And this whole site, even though it looks like a website, this is all driven off a Target dashboard that was created behind the scenes. Reason I want to share this is this is something that is great for inspiration um, and and ways for people to think about their BI solution and is the navigation set up uh, out there in your BI uh, platform for your users again heavily focused on user adoption um, gets the benefit from this so we have examples so if I go to the sales area. Again, you see Target working away, getting to its next dashboard, and here we have a real, ex you know, not real, but a, an example of demo data, but, and and you see that all the navigation's bit built within the site for your users. Uh, so they don't have to go and look at different folders, but they can continue to drill through, as Jared was showing you earlier, and, and pinpoint and zero in on, on the, 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 uh, information that they're looking for um you know and because of target's flexibility and capabilities you, you really could set this up any way you want but this is just again one example uh if i start drilling in on on burn 
and then I have these drilled down and I want to go look at what Vern's products are, I it will carry over that criteria that I've pre-selected and now I'm just focused on Vern's success with these products. So um, go back to the, the solutions page. And uh, we just have other demos. So you'll see some things about our latest release and our increased and increased enhancements with our map technology and um, other demo charts. Uh, there's also this airport demo, again, to give you kind of a little different taste or feel of like how dashboards can be set up and the flexibility of target. But here's another one uh, that we have and you click in and on the check-in it's gonna take you to a whole nother list of reports. And uh, this is important uh, because again, it's user adoption there uh, is built in so that if you don't wanna work your way through a uh, website, you should be able to work your way through uh, Target without any training to your end users. One more second. We also have um, other other things that, and this continues to grow and expand. But we have other other uh, webinars and blogs to look at. Um, again, a lot more uh, 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 examples to to review. But this is another thing that's kind of um, feature that Target offers. And when I mentioned that how we're a bimodal BI product, or uh, 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 it it's really is tying in the modern and the traditional BI. Traditional BI being more that you just have your standard data warehouse and that's what everybody has access to. Um, with the modern BI, it, you want, some users are very ana analytically driven. And so we offer this thing called data uh, discovery. And that's where these dashboards, and I'm sure by now everyone's sick of hearing about Corona, but these are some cool examples of people using data discovery. Uh, uh, and and demonstrating what uh, the power of target can do and provide based on data that maybe doesn't reside in your holistic uh, BI platform as of today. Um, it, it's really uh, useful for, again, people that want to get outside. Um, typically, on the, in the BI side, the, the you know, IT manages it, um, or you might have a BI team, but sometimes they, they might be looked at as a bottleneck or not, not sure if it makes sense to pull this data in. Well, data discovery allows those individual users to go and connect to those data sources, align them and mesh them and blend them together uh, to do some reporting on their own. Uh, and it, it, some people actually use and, 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 and leave it there, but some also use it as a proof of concept so that they can pull it into their traditional BI platform and, uh, and, and just make, make sure it makes sense to put that effort in. But again, uh, a lot of uh, examples and inspiration here for everybody to uh, zero in on. The other thing uh, that in, with our latest release of Target in 2021 is, tar is Target Insight. So what this is, is it gives you your user's behavior and and makes allows the, the administrators or the designers of the of the tool to go in and, and zero in on what is happening and what is being picked up and what isn't. So we can go look at what users are not active very quickly and figure out maybe you know at least it opens up the uh, conversation like what what's going on? Why aren't you using this? You, you kind of asked for this. Um, why why are you uh not having logged in since uh last year or something to that effect uh, uh yeah G gives you an opportunity to also talk about like all right you know this is an analysis you asked for but it doesn't seem like you're really using it uh is there something missing or is there something that we could be improving upon or delivering or including on this dashboard that would be helpful again keep that conversation going and, and increase that user adoption. Uh, we all learn differently. And, and uh, so something that might be, uh, makes sense to one user might 
not make sense to the other. So let's let's figure out what other uh, uh, things we could introduce to keep those people interactive with with the with the data. The last thing is uh, this target uh, site of the. Uh, more or less focuses on all the latest and greatest uh, add-ons and features that we've included in our latest release of 2021. Um, and this is a great site for everybody to kind of go to and, and learn more about the product and, and, and things to think about when um, uh, expanding and or evolving their solution. So uh, th this is, again, uh, critical in the, the success of your deployment of your of your BI solution and making sure that you are taking and zeroing in all the key components and capabilities that that Target has to offer uh, to your users. So, um, yeah, and then I'm just going to go back uh, with the, to what uh, Jared was mentioning with our security uh, enhancements and like those. That's critical in the batching of reports that is critical uh because it, you're not maintaining multiple re dashboards and or reports it's one report so if you have to make a change to it include a new kpi or swap something out you don't have to do it for to each individual user you just do it to that one report and target knows uh when you when you send it out again as a static report as a pdf or excel uh who should get what uh, as, as well as if you uh, if people are part of a role or multiple roles, they target knows what ones it should load based on that user's uh, the, uh, credentials of what they're logged into. So um, it's it, it makes managing the solution a lot easier too. So, uh, but we continue to, to expand upon our, as I said, innovate and expand upon our capabilities and features uh we want to hear from you and that's target community is, is a huge spot where you guys can all you know contribute and and put in your requests or thoughts as well and we we want to listen to it and and include that into our roadmap so uh, uh we can continue to expand and provide you a lot more uh, uh useful information uh for your users with that, I think uh, I'm good to go here on our side. Any um, questions? Thanks, Eric and Jared. Uh, yes, yeah. we do have a few that have come through. If anybody has any additional ones, please feel free to type those in while we go over um, th these first few ones. The first one is what kind of value are your customers getting from Target? That's a great question. Um, there's a lot of, uh, uh, it, it, it depends on what you're looking at, but there is a lot of ROI um, that people are seeing. We, we do have people that have all of a sudden like zeroed in and, 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 it, and Target is really good at highlighting maybe where there's dirty data or, or there's maybe a leaky faucet that nobody's uh, zeroed in on, but Target will highlight that very quickly and, and, and allow people to address that stuff um, right away. There's also the, the time saving of creating and, and maintaining individual reports. Uh, this this really is a time saver, especially since you can set this up and um, and and manage the how often the data is updated uh, on on. Uh, on the reports or data that's being provided to you. I mean, you always can be, you can technically be almost uh, near real time delivery to your users um, as well uh, and, and reports or dashboards. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there are things that where it really is a process enhancement tool as well, where people have realized, all right, we need to put this in better process. Like we were kind of just, you know, loose on this but uh before and now we really can uh put this process in place and and it's going to be you know 
more or less uh, increase our uh, uh, reporting or dashboard uh, analysis. So you, you tie up those things as well, but the, the, the ROI is uh, on some of these where people are just seeing better performance or better engagement and, uh, uh, and making sure that their, their team is uh, successful with the, uh, the necessary KPIs that they, they, they need. Uh, Jared, do you have anything to add? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. The, the value of Target really, like you, like you mentioned, Eric, it can be sometimes it's thought of as uh, kind of hard ROI, like a like a discrete dollar amount, um, which you know, depending on the industry of our customers, we we see that uh, realized in a variety of ways. One example comes to mind is um, you know customers that have uh, are managing uh, inventory in warehouses, being able to identify what the slow moving inventory is and, and optimize that inventory level so they can keep it at the right mix and lower the amount of, of costs that they have on hand and ultimately improves the bottom of the line. We've seen some customers uh, experience a hard ROI and uh, the bottom line of hundreds of thousands of dollars in their uh, first year with Target, just given that visibility into uh, the inventory levels, right? And that's specific to those types of customers. But, uh, you know, value is also, it's not uh, always just about a, a hard dollar amount. A lot of times it's, it's really more strategic in nature. So it, it can just be the ability to make, uh, to have insight into the business and what's going on and, and distribute that in, insight across the organization. So really you're, it's about making the data driven decisions and, and not having to, to, to guess or, or, or make decisions anecdotally, but having hard data uh, in order to understand what the right direction is to take in some cases. So really depending on the industry, there's a lot of times they're very uh, easy to, to, to come up with a hard ROI and reduced costs, improve profitability, optimize billing. Um, but then a lot of times it is just really the strategic nature of, of being able to, to use your data and put your data to work uh, throughout the day-to-day -day life of, of a company. Thanks guys. Uh, the next question is, can you share examples of how some of your customers are using Target? Of course, yeah. Um, so again, with the way we are able to push out that and, and receive the data, uh, there's, and some things we, you know, we didn't necessarily cover because there's a lot out there, but that we offer, um, but, they are pushing out to their end users, uh, people that need to interact with the data to help make uh, better decisions throughout their, um, uh, within their department um, and more informed decisions. And, and that's why I go back to like uh, us being an enterprise solution. Uh, we don't want to be you know, tied down to just your, your ERP or division data. There's other data sources that you guys are leveraging and pulling in. And again, going back to that we're an enterprise solution, you sh everybody should pull that in and manage it. Um, one of our very progressive customers, they are pulling in uh, at least, I think it, I think we said 45 to 50 different um, uh, data sources outside their main uh, ERP system. Uh, that is includes like their IT help desk tickets uh, and pulling in that information from that system so that their IT department can visualize outstanding uh, 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 tickets or what hasn't been, you know, paid attention to uh, and, and what needs, what needs focused on. So, you know, uh, and they've leveraged it through almost every single one of their departments. Uh, and, and then some departments have, you know, up to eight or 10 different data sources and uh, when they're able to line all that and, and, and push that out to your users, they have a lot more insights than, uh, than uh, their competitor down the, down the road. Uh, but yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're you know, also pushing out information to their customers. So uh, the, uh, the batching of reports, as Jared was mentioning, uh, that's a very useful thing too. That, so it doesn't have to be necessarily just information for your internal 
uh, users to have access to, but push it out to your customers, uh, depending on what, what you're needing to send them, AR report or, uh, or yeah, anything. Uh, the other uh, offering that Target has is called slideshows, or some people might uh, know it, of it as storyboards. That's, a, that's another huge uh, thing that where people are pushing out analysis and dashboards to a screen, a public screen, that maybe it's not customer facing, maybe it's in the um, the warehouse, maybe it's in the break room, but they're pushing out dashboards to uh, their users and communicating uh, like what's happening with that branch compared to the other branches or company as a, as a whole, or they're, they're displaying their safety record, um, you know, zero accidents for X amount of days. Uh, but they also, because you know, of Target's flexibility, they're also pushing out company information, uh, which is a very important. Uh, it, it's like their cork board, if you will. Company picnic is this Friday. Don't forget. Um, or, uh, you know, uh, don't forget to enter in this contest, this company contest for, you know, they did like a recipe um, uh, 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 contest. Who's got the best recipe in a bake off or something to that effect? It doesn't just have to be analysis it can be marketing and and uh, informational data that people can push out to their end users and the analysis are great if it, the data gets updated then the the dashboard or now now analysis that gets circulated um through the slideshow will update so it's it, there's a a lot of great um ways to getting the data the other is mobility we have our own native apps and you actually could go and download um, our app and it will come with preloaded demo data and, and play around with it and see how people interact with it. Uh, and and you could you know message it or email to another target user and it will carry over the criteria that you've maybe selected. And so when that person gets that email or text message when they click on it, it will open up based on what you drilled in on so they don't have to figure out what you were zeroing in on. So I hope that helps. Again, Jared, anything else to add that I missed? Uh, you, you covered quite a bit there. I think it was good. I mean, I guess what uh, something that came to my mind, I mentioned, um, you know, one particular type of example related to the KPIs, you know, inventory, you know, management and optimization. Um, you know, we've got a lot of great, customer stories on our website and something you know, maybe just to contrast that inventory level something like a uh, one of our customers in the food and beverage space Monin, they make uh, flavored syrups and, and other mixers for you know that are used across really the the world and you know different coffee houses and restaurants and such um, yeah they initially uh, need a better visibility across their uh, supply chain and, and distribution and so it was really just about getting that real-time access without having to, to, to manually cobble together that information, which was very prone to human error. So it was really just about the automation and validation and, and timely, accurate access to that data. But what was cool is oh, through their evolution and, and as they started using Target and used it more and more, it became ingrained in sort of their culture. Um, they eventually got to the point where they, they were taking in more data, like Eric was mentioning, so key market-related information. So they can start when it comes to you know creation of of new recipes and new products. They want to understand what flavors are going to work, uh, you know, are popular or, or, or selling best in in different areas of the world or different even areas of the country. It helps them. It helps that data guides them down. Okay, what where should we make investments in, uh, just in terms of bringing new products to to different markets? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Great, thanks guys. Um, any advice for someone new to BI and just getting started? I definitely, uh, uh, I would say start small. Um, I think that's that's pretty key um, to that one. And, and what I mean by that is, 
a lot of times, you know, organization, you know, get, gets to the point where they, they are on board and, and see the value in, in business intelligence and, and making data-driven decisions. Uh, it becomes exciting to a lot of people in the organization and, you know, say it's many different departments and everybody is, uh, wants to tackle a certain uh, challenge and use it for a certain purpose. And that's great, um, but it's important to, I guess, basically prioritize, right? Uh, um, it's sort of the idea of, of uh, an evolution versus a revolution. You don't want this big bang approach where you're gonna try to accommodate everybody's needs and desires right from the get go. Uh, really just start small with some key areas, stay focused, so that way you're getting value in a matter of a, a few weeks versus a, a much longer project that's taken on too long and it, it could be months or, you know, if you ever really deliver on this big giant, you know, uh, mammoth of a project. So yeah, everybody's gonna bring a lot of ideas and have a lot of great need for BI, but when you start small, you get some early wins uh, and it kind of builds momentum. Then you move on to the next project, next highest priority and tackle that and you get value much sooner and everybody gets on board and 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 further, uh, you know, uh, excited about how they can use it. So I, I really see that as one of the most important factors is um, get started with with something that you can, you can turn around quickly to, to have some success early and, and then uh, continue it. No. That, yeah, that's perfect, Jared. And like, that's again, why we have a very high successful user adoption. Um, if you go big bang, sometimes things get lost or never actually accurately validated. And that is, um, that's a big point. Um, when you can start small and zero in, you want to, after you go through and understand what the requirements are, but you want to go through the, the dashboards and, and interact with it and make sure that it's, validated to what your end users would expect. So they never um, question that that uh, one version of the truth. And that's a big point too about BI. It is one version of the truth. So uh, versus everybody just kind of building their own things on the fly. Um, you, there's a lot of things where you're just kind of doing your own ad hoc reporting on your own um that you might be including or excluding that makes your numbers differ from what this other uh uh, uh colleague is receiving or, or is looking at so that that's again another positive for bi it's one version of the truth but it needs to be validated and everybody on board that this is what um they expect uh so uh the other thing that we have uh, also uh, pushed out or recommended to our users is is when they are ready to deploy to their to their end users is is set up a a uh, an email address uh, so that people can uh, funnel all their requirements or their asks or questions to that one email address. Nothing gets lost or uh, and not not hit on, but. That, that they have that. Um, again, BI is going to continue to uh, grow and and uh, new data sources are always going to pop up. So you're going to get a lot more requests in. And uh, going back to the, you know, starting small, as Jared was mentioning, that also gives your team a, a way to zero in and understand the features and capabilities uh, so that nothing's missed out on uh, as you evolve the solution. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Um, I think that's all the questions that we have for you today. If anybody has any additional questions, please feel free to contact your account manager here at Anovia Consulting, and we can further address. Or Eric, Jared, do you have your contact info as well? Uh, yeah, my email is ew at target.com and, you know, target, T-A-R-G-I-T dot com. And mine is J-A-C-O at target.com. All right, great. Well, thank you, Eric and Jared, for presenting today. It was very informative. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, appreciate it much. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time with us today. We We enjoyed it. 
All right. And again, thank you uh, for joining us. And if you're watching on demand, we thank you for taking the time out. We do have a new round of training workshops that we have added to our um, Inovia website page. And you can visit our training workshop page at Inovia.com slash workshops for more information and to register for the training workshop that fits your role. And we do have more webinars coming up. Tomorrow, we have Naveen Reddy from Dynamics eShop presenting on expand your e-commerce with eShop solutions. And next Tuesday afternoon, we have Avalara presenting on top tax tips and concerns for manufacturers. So check out our website for more of our upcoming events and that's anovia.com slash events. We do have a podcast going on. It's called the Anovia Conversation. And we just wanna encourage you to listen to the selection that our hosts, Steve Waltz and Jeff Pergolsky have provided to us. And you can learn more about the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page. And that's anovia.com slash podcast. So check out our podcast selection and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air. All right, well, we thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Take care, everyone.